As Michelle said, my name is Christine Jones. It's a particular honour for me to be able to um, take part in presenting this case today. I'm an adversarial lawyer by training, but a, a um, restorative justice practitioner by choice. So I know that this will be the best day I'll ever have in this building. <laughs> And that's because um, today First Nations people and other citizens of Australia have come together to ensure their concerns about the Great Barrier Reef and the atmospheric commons are heard by this People's Tribunal. This group of people will be speaking on behalf of all of the Great Barrier Reef's communities of life, including all the life that depends on it, as well as our precious, fragile atmosphere. Each of the people who are part of this case will present a different part of the story, but together they will challenge the federal and Queensland state government's inability to protect the ecological health and evolutionary future of the Great Barrier Reef, and to challenge the role that the federal and state governments are playing in exacerbating and contributing to the life-threatening climate change. And together we all want to create a better governance system for our atmosphere and for the Great Barrier Reef. The people in this case are drawing on their rights and the rights of the natural world as set out in the international agreement, the Universal Declaration for the Rights of Mother Earth. They are also drawing upon their obligations to speak up for the reef and to play their part in caring for all life in Australia. On behalf of the Great Barrier Reef Communities of Life, we ask that this tribunal bear witness to our concerns and issue a statement of claims based on our case here today. In summary, the group alleges that the Federal Government and Queensland Governments are violating the rights of the Great Barrier Reef Community of Life to exist, thrive and to evolve. They're doing this by allowing the fossil fuel industry to continue to expand and operate in Queensland and are allowing the fossil fuel industry to violate the rights of the Great Barrier Reef community of life, and thirdly, are violating the rights of the atmospheric commons to play its role within the wider Earth community. The governments must embark on a program of restorative justice to mitigate climate change, support the Great Barrier Reef, and build a different future for the care and management of the Great Barrier Reef. People who are bringing this case are Maramu from the sovereign Yudinji and traditional custodian for the Cairns region, Valentine Nona from the Jiru people near the area known now as Mission Beach, Blair Polisi from the organisation 350.org. These people have invited the following expert witnesses. Professor Justin Marshall, who will give expert scientific evidence about the current status of and threats to the Great Barrier Reef, and Ms Ravel Poynton from the Environmental Defenders Office Queensland, who will give expert legal evidence about the current status of laws in Australia that are meant to be protecting the Great Barrier Reef and the atmosphere. Miramu is ready to go, I can see. <laughs> so, uh, can you uh, tell us, um, perhaps, which national group you support and which country you represent today, Marimu? Uh, thank you, Christine. Peace be with you. Uh, thank you for your kind words. And actually, uh, before we proceed uh, any further, we would certainly like to convey two things as a matter of protocol. And I must say that the protocol has been observed here brilliantly today. Firstly, the Yudinji people and the sovereign Yudinji government would like to extend their blessings and heartfelt friendship to the tribal societies on whose land we meet today. We must be permitted also to acknowledge them and pay respect to them as the true and correct owner. In fact, uh, the Yudinji people have a memorandum of understanding agreement with the true and correct authority on this land, and we would certainly uh, like to continue that uh, in good faith and in peace. They're here today, and we thank their kindness and gracious welcome. So thank you. They know who they are. Separate, uh, also, uh, we'd also like to thank members of uh, other societies that may also be present here today. Every one of you is from a society, so thank you for your uh, attendance and uh, attention to this matter. Separate to this, we would also like to offer a word of caution to those who may wish to not know certain truths and certain facts. For those not interested in the truth, you have an opportunity to leave this room now. For those persons wishing to learn of certain truths, then we welcome you to stay. 
but one cannot unlearn these things of which we will talk of here today. Are there any objections? Then I will proceed. My given name is Murumu, inappropriate persona, and we make this special appearance here on this land just for you. It is an honour to be received with such cordiality, kindness and respect, and I have to acquaint you that it is an honour to be acting in my capacity as a representative of the sovereign Yudinji government. It must be said and a reminder to those present here today, the Yudinji people were not included in the creation of Australia's legal foundation document, the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act of 1901, or any other state constitution, uh, apart from the constitution that created the sovereign Yudinji government, and that is to say, we, the Yudinji men and women, are not subject to Australian law, but foreign persons on our territory are subject to ours. Now, I apologise because we don't have a map, but I can certainly say this, that we have created a legal personality called the Yudinji Marine Economic Zone. It's roughly 80 kilometres out. Uh, for Australians, you would say near Port Douglas and just north of Innisfail, if you go 80 kilometres out into the ocean, that is uh, the Yudinji Territory in terms of its economic zone. The territory, its dominions, eminens and imperium has been acknowledged and recognised by the United Nations and the Commonwealth of Australia and the Federal Court of Australia. I will take the next question. So related to that explanation about the Nidinji, can you tell us what your concerns are about the Great Barrier Reef and the threat that it faces? Well, the question uh, is certainly about the spiritual connection, I think. is uh, It's a wonderful question, Christine. It truly is an honour and a pleasure to speak about our creator, Gai Barangupi. That's the uh, name that we have. And I could spend all day talking about... Uh, the, 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 the works of our creator, but it deserves and respects more time. Um, it injures connections to this, the area that the people call the reef is spiritual, it's lawful and now legal, and our responsibilities are great. And to tell you about the world of Gaia Baragupi, especially on this day, uh, would, like I said, require more time, but the very short of it is that we do have an obligation to uphold these sacred laws. And uh, that uh, governs the Yidinji society, which have their roots in ancient times. Uh, Gurubana is uh, the Yidinji word. It's in our legal dictionary. It means the wet season or the laws of the wet season. Gurubinya is the laws of the dry season. We have many laws. Uh, but I'm not going to go into that today because um, I don't take too much time and, uh, with respect to the other speakers. Uh, so my question would be, so are the Yidinji men or women and women rather, not the beneficiaries of such wonders, thanks to be the great one. As defenders of the faith, are we not the defenders of this gift, which is the law? Uh, the gift of life and all of its beauty. And I see these children here today and I can't help not think about them and uh, my son and many others. Perhaps a more appropriate question is, what spiritual, cultural or any connection to the reef does the Commonwealth of Australia possess? Has it secured a formal agreement with the Yudinji people through its legal personality, namely the sovereign Yudinji government? How can the Commonwealth of Australia and or any of its juridical persons lay claim to the reef when Australia's own parliamentarians say sovereignty has never been ceded in relation to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples? If Yudinji are the acknowledged owners pursuant to their laws, then what does the Commonwealth of Australia and or any of its citizens actually own? The Federal Court of Australia bound all Australians to acknowledge certain facts, including but not limited to the following. Yudinji has a system of land tenure. Yudinji has a system of authority and decision making. Yudinji has a system of dispute resolution. We call that a court, and it's this court that I've been invited to and charged to preside over, preside over right now. This is before our creator. Please do not interpret these facts as threats. We see them as a gift from the Almighty. The Yudinji people have taken this course of action really to help settle the past and secure the future for all persons on our territory. Our Creator demands it through peace, charity, forgiveness and love for all things good. Christine and I were just talking about that before this presentation. 
Uh, I guess we'll go to question three. Would you like to answer question? Okay, well, the question here is, uh, uh, can you please tell us what your community is most worried about? Well, we have learned with the greatest of concern uh, from members of the Yudinji Society, the Tribal Council of Elders, and we've read information published by scientists and other foreign persons, and we've heard people here today uh, that the reef has sustained tragic injuries. So my immediate concern is, who is causing the injury, loss or harm? Who has clean hands, who does not? Now, if the Commonwealth of Australia has no connection to the Yudinji Territory through any formal agreement in way of a treaty or bargain with a recognised authority, in this case Yudinji, then are agents and or representatives of the Commonwealth of Australia not injuring someone else's property? I've heard a lot spoken today and uh, it seems that uh, many people here are trying to exhaust domestic avenues. We would like to see this in a different light. If the Yudinji people uh, rely on or are restricted from accessing resources as a means of subsistence, then is the Commonwealth of Australia committing crimes against humanity? It must be put on the record that the Yudinji people are very concerned about the actions of the Commonwealth of Australia. Once again, it must be conveyed that the Yudinji people, through its legal personality, the sovereign Yudinji government, is offering to remedy the errors in Australia's legal foundation document for not one dollar. We don't want money. We have extended our hands of friendship and good faith and in peace to provide maximum cure and maintenance. But what have we received in return? Maybe this should be the Commonwealth of Australia's greatest concern. Murumu, in relation to the, the reef, what would you like the tribunal uh, to take away from today, from the Udinji? Thank you for another brilliant question, Christine. We see the answer is simply uphold the rule of law. It's that simple. Uphold the United Nations declarations of rights of Indigenous peoples, UNDRIP. Uphold the Sovereign Indigenous Government's Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. Australian citizens, uphold your constitution. Defend it from falling into disrepute or disaffection. Uphold and protect the United Nations Charter from falling into disrepute and disaffection. After all, Australia is a founding member. The rule of law is integral. If mankind is to live in peace, maintain order and good governance, our very future depends on it. It is a matter of international security. Uh, in closing, the Yudinji people have come here today not to ask for anything, but we have come in good faith and in peace to instruct and inform the Commonwealth of Australia that it or any of its persons, that any more acts causing damage, injury or loss to our sacred reef will invoke prosecution through our legal universe of laws in a competent court, maybe something like this, perhaps using the Yudinji's Environmental and Biodiversity Act. We do have our acts in place for a reason. That is to protect Yudinji's territory on this earth, to ensure our unbroken physical connection, dating back to a time prior to 1788, continues. We want to share it with the young people and future generations. The Yudinji people will watch your actions with interest and your understanding is appreciated. And to all Australians here today, you are the Commonwealth of Australia. So please take care and govern yourselves accordingly. May Gaia Baragupi protect and bless you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Maramu, for uh, the presentation. A question that I would have um, liked to have put to all the First Nations presenters in all of the um, cases heard today is about this, um, and, and, and it goes to the question I asked previously and something that you just mentioned in, in, in terms of prosecuting potential crimes against humanity, expanding the application of laws, but looking at the parallel um, existence of legal systems and a many multiple legal systems predating colonisation, and the, plu the the kind of pluralism that we might look to for the future for for some combination of hope in protecting the integrity of these um, ecosystems that are so crucial to um, our existence in in the law of your people, in terms of um, in terms of confronting this this um, rampant desecration, what what kind of um, procedures and, um, and processes have been implemented historically? Um, are there aspects of restorative justice processes or, or, or what would you recommend in terms of 
um, not only stopping the destruction to come, but dealing with what has been done? Well, thank you for the question. I think the most important thing is quite simple, is for Australians to prompt the administrator of the Commonwealth of Australia or their representative, in this case, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, to actually sit down and have face-to-face -face talks with the sovereign energy government. Um, uh, I don't think we're really interested at this stage in hanging people or, um, in fact, we're looking at, uh, you know, wiping the, the, the slate clean when it comes to international crimes. But we certainly want to make a clean start and not let it happen again. I think this is the gift we're talking about because if I can't sit down with you and, and forgive you um, for any uh, inequities or whatnot, uh, then what kind of God or creator do I serve? And that, I think that's what today is all about is that uh, everyone here has conscience, the ability in terms of the adults and some of the younger people to know what's right and wrong. What does it serve? Who does it serve? And all the evidence we're pointing out comes from Australia, Justice Dowson. So any Australian who may not take up this charge may be destroying the office of the Federal Court of Australia when it bound all Australians. If we offer uh, some sort of tree, uh, you know, talks to enter our, our territory or gain consent, then I'm just putting it out there, it's only a question, but would an agent of the Commonwealth of Australia or the administrator, would, would they be acting seditiously if they didn't look to secure the longevity of the Commonwealth of Australia? Because that's what this is all about. Um, we're here to look after people in our territory. That's our law. Um, and there are terrible things that have happened on our land. Beheadings, uh, continual desecration of the reef, uh, rainforest and all this type of thing. But in the wisdom of Janala Nirinji, the Tribal Council of Elders, they've sat down and we've gone through all these things. What should we do? Oh, these are terrible things. Yes, but all the money in the world is not going to bring people back. All the money in the world is not going to repair the reef or the rainforest or this, that and the other. How can we go about it? The leadership has to come from the tribal authority, the true government. In this case, Nirinji. That's only our opinion and our view. We don't force that on anyone else. But people must know who they are and who they're not and what they're not. And we are only going by our laws thanks to our creator.